Hello, your call cannot be taken at the moment, so please leave your message after the tone. Yo, Tremaine, this is like the third time I'm calling you, man. Pick up your phone, bro. Bro, I've got some crazy news, bro. I don't know if you're still in Cambridge, bro, but I need you to check your emails whenever you get this message, man. I mean, I've pretty much wrapped up the interviews. I'm just waiting for you to finish up those Cambridge B-roll shots and for Patrick to get back to him with the music, but... Yeah, so I'm in the kitchen right now, bro. Just pick up your phone, man. Yeah, but basically I'm calling because I just got something in the post that's going to make this whole documentary go to a different level, man. Remember the first time I told you about Michael? It was around two or three months before we started planning the documentary. And he always talked about this sketchbook that he kept back when he was in Cambridge. Yeah, basically he found it and he sent it to me. And I've scanned most of the pages and I've sent it to you. There's a lot of material in here, man, like... For example, he's got drawings of his family here. He's got some cutouts, newspaper articles, just random notes. I mean, I doubt he even remembers most of this stuff. Oh, shit, my pasta. This flipping pot, man, nearly burnt the damn pasta. Anyway, look. He's got a drawing or some kind of cutout where he's pasted some anime character. Sort of blasting down on Cambridge. And he's got Superman flying up to a bunch of popular London buildings. I mean, you can really see his distaste for Cambridge at the time. It's like, as a kid here, Michael was trying so desperately to display his desire for some escape. And it looks like the only way he was able to display it was in his sketchbook. I mean, I remember when I first met him, I could see the excitement in his eyes when he got to London. It was so childlike and I was kind of amused by it. I mean, at the time I could tell that he was trying so hard to compress that excitement, but there's no hiding it when you're reading this sketchbook, bro. I think even something as simple as just showing some of these pages in a documentary are gonna display that so well. Yeah, that's the Michael. Can't even send a message. Anyway, we look at some of these other pages. And Michael wrote some notes. I mean, this one says, Dear Mum, I know you're not going to read this, but I miss you. You must have wrote this while she was still in a care home. And then this older one that I read earlier, it says, If home was in a comic, it would be the evil genius's henchman. Home isn't good enough to be the good guy. It's not even bad enough to be the villain. It's just home. So boring. I mean, if you ask me, there's something so poetic about that man. It's like I remember watching him draw buses when he first came here, and I was like five years ago. It wasn't until the other week that Michael told me he was actually upset when he got back to Cambridge the first time. And it's not because what you think. Like, it's not that he was actually back in Cambridge, but he told me that it was because he felt that London and Cambridge were actually the same. If you go to this page here, he kind of explains it. On the back, on the back of the book, he says, I just got back and I wish I never went. They say never meet your idols. I just visited mine. Now I'm back, I realise my home and my idol are so much alike, more so than they are different. The smells, the architecture, they're different. But the stories, they're all the same. I wish I knew that before. Now, bro, I don't know about you, but that speaks a thousand words to me. and That's gold for the documentary, man. Anyway, check your damn emails and call me back when you get this message, man. I'm going to go call Michael and thank him for the sketchbook. I'll see you when you get back. Bye.